Hello and welcome. If you're new here, my name is Patrick and this channel is all about anatomy and physiology. One of the most common questions I get from students who are in histology classes is where do I even start? Everything looks the same under the microscope, so I'm lost, I don't even know where to begin. So today I'm gonna take an online histology quiz and I'm gonna walk you through my thought process for how I identify this structure is this, this structure is this. Also, this video is sponsored by KenHub, but I will tell you about them at the end. The first thing I do when I see a slide like this is I try to blow it up as much as I can. I wanna see as much detail as possible. And when I do, I see something super important. Number one, I know that this is muscle tissue right away, but determining what kind of muscle tissue is gonna be our next big thing. We know that there are three types, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. And so if I'm trying to determine between those three, I'm gonna look for something in particular. I'm gonna look at how many nuclei they have per cell, and I'm also gonna look for how they join together because that's gonna be a big hint. And in this case, I'm looking at these little gaps, these little lines between each cell. Those are what are called gap junctions, and it's how I know that this is cardiac muscle. Those gap junctions get the cardiac muscle tissue to be really close together and let them send electrical signals really quickly. So if I go ahead and zoom back out, I can say that it's either cardiac muscle, There's all, we can also call it myocardium if we wanted to. This next slide is a great example of how you can use the bigger picture to figure out what the individual tissue is. So let's go ahead and make it bigger. And we notice that this is some kind of tube. We can see the lumen in the middle. We can see some kind of endothelium around that. And then because I assume that this is some kind of artery, like a muscular artery, that that green highlight is some kind of smooth muscle, right? We don't have skeletal muscle around our arteries. We don't have cardiac because that's just in the heart. So this has to be smooth muscle. Let's go ahead and see if we are right. And we are. This next slide, let's go ahead and make it bigger. And I see a bunch of things that are just like layers, 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 but it's not a layer. Remember, we're looking at something that's been cut in half. And in particular, it looks like this is a bundle of different things. And when I say bundle, it can either be a bundle of muscle tissue, or it can be a bundle of nervous tissue. And I know that this is nervous tissue because I don't see any nuclei. I just see long, long bundles of axons. In the nervous tissue histology video that I did, I made this comparison that it looks kind of like an electrical wire. And each electrical wire, if you were to cut it in half, has a bunch of tinier, thinner wires throughout the entire thing. So if we go back out, let's go ahead and see, is this nervous tissue? And it is. For this next slide, I definitely want to get more information. So let's zoom in. I can tell that this is simple epithelium of some kind, because remember, simple means a single layer. And so it's either squamous, cuboidal, or columnar. This looks more cuboidal to me, right? It doesn't look like long and stretched out like columnar cells, and it doesn't look squished like squamous cells. So I'm going to say that this is simple cuboidal epithelium. And got it. All right, I love this next slide because the color itself tells you everything you need to know. It's staining that beautiful deep red color. But what I wanna do is tell you how you would find what structure this is even without color. So let's go ahead and blow it up. We can tell that this substance is in some kind of container, right? It looks like it's totally separate from all of the other tissues around it. So it's in some kind of container. The other thing that we can tell is that when we zoom in, each one of these cells are super, super tiny compared to everything around it. And so I have a bunch of tiny cells and I don't see any nuclei. So I can tell that this is blood, in particular that these are erythrocytes or red blood cells. And the classic giveaway is one, they're really, really tiny size, but also their lack of nuclei. They do that, they eject their nuclei as they're maturing because they wanna make space for more hemoglobin and more oxygen. And just having any of those extra organelles would weigh them down. So let's go ahead and say, is this blood? Boom. Next slide, we can tell that this is some kind of muscle tissue again. Let's go ahead and blow that up. As we zoom in, we see that classic striated appearance. We see a bunch of connective tissue in between. We already got our cardiac muscle. We already got our smooth muscle. So this has to be skeletal muscle. All right, so this one's a little trickier because we see a lot of white space. So let's go ahead and zoom in. Maybe we can determine what it is, okay? As we're zooming in, it looks like I'm maybe around the alveoli here. Uh, the white space, I think, is some kind of connective tissue. And given how packed the green section is, I'm gonna say that it's dense connective tissue. Yes! This next slide is interesting because we're back to epithelium again. We know that like, okay, we have all this pink and purple, but we're not trying to figure out what those epithelial cells are. We're trying to figure out what this thin layer is right here. So as we zoom in, 
we can tell that it's right between a bunch of connective tissue on the bottom and some kind of epithelium on top, but we just want where they meet. And so that's actually not a type of epithelial tissue. That's the layer between them that joins them to the connective tissue underneath. That's called the basement membrane. Got it. So it looks like this next slide is the same slide from before, but zoomed out a little bit. What we have here is a layer and layer and layer situation where we have a bunch of epithelial cells stacked on top of each other. And we know that that stacking, that multiple layer, is called stratified epithelium. But what kind of stratified epithelium? Remember, we have three choices, squamous, cuboidal, columnar. When I zoom in, it looks like I'm getting just like some squished cells. These all look pretty flat. So I'm gonna say that that is stratified squamous epithelium. Cool. This next one is interesting because one, the color is, I mean, almost indiscernible, right? It's really, really dark. And so we're probably not dealing with a tissue that we could cut into really, really thin sections. We're dealing with something more opaque, which is why it's so dark. So as we're looking around, I'm gonna go ahead and look at some of the other pictures that we can see. I see something with a bunch of holes in it. I'm seeing something like that. Oh man, what, like, not really sure what that is at first glance, but I'm seeing these classic holes. Now, what I wanna do is zoom in on each one of these, like, island looking things. This, I can tell, is compact bone. There are two types of bone that we would really identify, compact and spongy. And so I can tell that these are compact bone because these tubes, these, these hollow areas, are gonna be ways that we can transport materials up the compact, really dense bone. And so, because they have all these different holes and because they're really dark, I can tell that that is compact bone. All right, we get the same slide that we saw already, but let's go ahead and zoom in on it because I feel like that's gonna give us some clues. Okay, we're looking around and we're looking for this stuff. Now, we already saw that the stuff above it was some stratified squamous epithelium. We have some more epithelial cells underneath it. We already know that this is under the basement layer. So I'm kind of using our context clues and our deduction from earlier, but I know that this is gonna be some kind of connective tissue. It looks pretty spread out. So I don't know what kind of loose connective tissue, but I know, it's, I know it's some kind of loose connective tissue. Let's see if that counts. It does. This next slide is just one individual cell. And I know that Ken Hub is trying to quiz us on like what parts of the cell are. So are we gonna have to determine, is this the goopy cytoplasm? Is this the cell nucleus? Or is this some kind of particular organelle? And so as I'm looking through some of the other slides, it's the green empty space that's highlighted. So I can go ahead and tell the, em not empty space, but the liquid inside of a cell, cytoplasm. Cyto for cell, plasm for liquid, and cytoplasm. You're not gonna like my thought process for this one, but this is one of those classic, just you know what it is when you see it because it is so classic and hard to miss. This is hyaline cartilage. If we wanted to look through some of the other slides, it just looks like glass. To me, it looks like ethereal, kind of like I'm, I'm somewhere in Lothlorien in Lord of the Rings. Um, I'm, I know that that's hyaline cartilage. This next slide is interesting because it's mostly white space. And so we don't have a ton to work with. We're basically trying to determine what is all the white stuff. Is it fluid? Is it air? Or is it fat? So let's blow this up. As I'm zooming in, I'm looking for a few different things. If I'm trying to determine whether this is like alveolar sacs and this is all just air between them, I know that each alveolar sac is going to have like individual cells lining each alveoli. I can usually tell like multiple cell nuclei in the walls of the alveoli. But for this structure, I'm only seeing one nuclei kind of sporadically dotted among all of these things. And so I know that these big globs are adipose, those are lipids, right? So this is adipose tissue, and each one of those things is an adipose cell. If we wanted to see some of the other clues, we could tell like, okay, like we know that it's around a, a breast, so that's probably fat, so we can tell that's adipose tissue. But even without the other context clues, we know that that's gonna be adipose tissue because it's mostly globs of lipid with one nuclei around the entire thing. Got it. All right, on this next slide, we're back to epithelial cells. So as we zoom in, we see that it's a single layer, so we know it's simple, and the shape of it is more columnar. It's a long boy, so we know that, that is going to be simple columnar. So for this one, which is our last one in the series, we're trying to identify something within the cell itself. We already identified the cytoplasm, the fluid around a cell. And as I look through some of these other ones, okay, that looks like it's a, a cell body in a neuron. Okay, once again, something in the middle of a cell body. 
And sure enough, when I get the actual diagram, it looks like it's just something in the middle of a cell body. And so what I think this is, is the cell nucleus based on all the other examples I was given, got it. So there you go. There's an overview of how I do my histology quizzes and how I determine what structure is what. Now, if you want to go and get practice for yourself, then you need to check out the quizzes on KenHub. You can find histology quizzes for each bodily system, as well as units for individual structures like the heart. You can try pre-built quizzes or make custom quizzes with multiple systems all at once. I usually combine three or four units for an extra challenge. Plus, after you take a quiz, you'll get a breakdown of some of the stats regarding your performance, like your success rate, the time spent doing the quiz, and points earned within their system. They also have a handy feature where you can take a quiz that only covers your weak spots on the quizzes that you've already taken. That way you don't spend time studying the structures that you already know, you're just covering your weak spots. KenHub also has quizzes and informational articles for gross anatomy and embryology, which makes this a great tool for your anatomy class, no matter what unit you're in. Uh, you can use most of KenHub's features for free, but if you want access to all the premium content, all the quizzes and all the fun stuff, then go to khub.me slash corpus and you'll also get 10% off. They also have a no questions asked seven day money back guarantee. So you can try out Ken Hub Premium. And if you don't like it for whatever reason, you can get your money back. Thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. Thank you for watching. You can find a link to more histology content right there. You can also find a subscribe link right here. And that's gonna do it. The queen of this house has spoken. Have fun, be good. Thanks for watching.